I'm here with the two finalists of the World of Warcraft Continental Finals. Uh, first, Happy Minty, you came into the tournament. You literally won everything up to the Grand Final and uh, then you lost two matches in a row. Is there anything you can pinpoint uh, for this loss? Um, well, there's definitely a few things. We didn't play our best that, that we played all tournament. I'd say that yesterday we played phenomenally and uh, today we just didn't have quite as much synergy as we, we had previously. Also, um, people kind of figured out how to cope with us, uh, specifically their PMR. They figured out that just incredible offensive pressure just uh, puts, puts the favor in their side and it's almost possible to just turn it around. And uh, because we were playing with the Druid, um, priests are just a little bit better with dealing like incredible bursts and offensive pressure than druids are. And I feel like uh, maybe in hindsight we should have tried to mirror them, but um, I don't know. It was, it was some good matches and we felt like we could win as, as druid mage rogue. And it was, uh, it was disappointing, but we're still happy we did as well as we did. And uh, we definitely felt like we made a good showing. Would you say that after qualifying for the global finals, it didn't really matter to you that much anymore which uh, place you had in the end? Um, I wouldn't say that. It definitely, it definitely did matter to us because uh, global finals is great and all. Like I'm looking forward to it, and, and I hope that we can attend it. Um, however, you know we've never placed first in a tournament, and uh, the past I'd say three ESLs, people predicted that we may may place first, and um, the pa all three times we've not quite reached it. We've gotten third, we've gotten second, so maybe next time we'll finally pull through and, and take the grand prize. Right, and on the other side we have Rios from Treasured All-Stars. You came into this tournament, you'd never been at an ESL event before, and you placed first. So uh, I think people uh, saw you as the underdog, the one that could win, but wasn't uh, the favorite. Would you say you've had difficulty adapting to uh, the offline uh, surroundings? Yeah, it was really tough at first. Um, if anyone was watching the stream, uh, the first two matches that we played were against the two teams of all the teams that were here that we felt that we weren't perfectly confident against. We hadn't really practiced against them or their lineups that they would play against us enough to really feel confident against those teams. And those were our first two matches of the day. Combined land jitters with just having no idea what to do and we looked really bad. Um, we eventually started to get more and more comfortable the more and more games we played. Um, and just slowly crawled back. Um, after we had lost those first two matches, we're like, as long as we don't get last, as long as we don't get seventh, like we can't lose another match. Like we'll we'll just feel bad because we flew ourselves, you know, out over here from across the country. Two of our players are from California and one's from Texas. Um, and we were like, we need to get at least six so we have something to show for our efforts. But once we had played a couple matches and sort of had a feel for LAN, um, we got kind of into a flow. We just started playing World of Warcraft again. You know, it's just sort of like, we're like, let's just play WoW. Like, let's just play. That's what we know how to do. Um, you know, do the things that we've always done instead of feeling caught up. Like, oh, we have to do this to win. No, let's do what we've always done. Uh, what would you say uh, was your edge over the other teams? Was it that uh, they didn't really know how you'd play? Or was it that you just knew how to play your comp uh, perfectly? Well. Coming into the tournament, I thought our advantage would be um, versatility because we uh, are classically a rogue mage priest team, but we spent a lot of time practicing with other healers that with the 3.0 changes we felt were a little bit stronger overall. Uh, and we thought that that would give us an advantage in matches um, against certain lineups. Like we spent n not quite enough time with our uh, our healer, Toes, who is normally our priest, uh, he spent time on Shaman, he spent time on Paladin. Paladin worked out really well because it's very similar to Priest uh, in its healing mode. Um, and so we found that that was a, a slight advantage against other RMPs. Um, so we tried to run that whenever we could. Um, we wanted to play Shaman against the Warlock teams because we thought that that would give us a significant aggressive advantage, but he just did not get enough time to feel comfortable with it and we ended up having to run Priest. Um, he's a really good player. He also got Brutal Gladiator on a Druid, so uh, by the time level 80 tournaments or the first season of level 80 comes out, he'll be confident on, an, confident on every healing class. Yeah, that would, would have been my next question. Do you think you're versatile enough to uh, play on top uh, with level 80 characters as well? Absolutely. Um, you know, before coming to this tournament, you know, not even looking at the outlook in, in terms of on a professional level, but just taking into account what we all felt was best um, 
you know, just for even playing the arena season and having fun playing the game. Um, you know, theory crafting, uh, we figured that, you know, shamans were going to be really good. Uh, priests will be good if they can get a little bit more survivability. Uh, paladins will be good for defensive lineups. Um, but also, like, uh, obviously I played Rogue every single game this tournament. Um, but the first character that I'm leveling to 80 is Hunter, because I think they're going to be fantastic. Uh, and I think they're going to mesh very well with Death Knights, which I think are going to have a big impact um, on arena play. And we'll still have Rogue and Mage and a couple other classes that we can play to fall back on. And having a healer that can play every healer class, I really think we're a great team setting up towards level 80. Just amazing. Uh, we're, we'll be the, the X6 of the USA. All right, I'm going to toss this question to Happy Minty as well. How do you think will you cope with uh, level 80 characters, with Death Knights, uh, all the stuff that is going to change? Um, I'm really confident. I mean, I think Soda demonstrated that uh, he's an amazing multi-classer. I'm picking up a Death Knight myself, and I think that uh, Pro WoW Gaming is going in the direction of being able to multi-class really well, and so we're going to move ourselves in that direction also. Um, and I'm, I'm really confident in my teammates, and I've never doubted their ability. In fact, I've always considered myself, if anyone, the weakest link. So. Uh, I'm, 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 I just hope that they keep me around and I'm having a blast and uh, I think that we've got some good opportunity in the future. All right, now Trade Chat All Stars, obviously not a sponsor team. Uh, is a sponsor around the corner for you? Uh, we have no clue. You know, we flew into this completely cold. Uh, we hadn't talked to anyone. It, we didn't talk to anyone about trying us out on like a, you know, a, a testing the waters type thing, see how we did here. Um, but I do think we are uh, a legit and capable team, and if there, you know, are I, I, I think CGS just closed. There might be a couple gaming teams that are looking for WoW teams now. Um, anyone looking for a US team, I think we're a true competitor. So, all right, Reef, thanks a lot. Uh, congratulations on reaching first place. Happy Minty, second place is still very good. I'm looking forward to seeing you both in Hanover in March, and keep practicing, and hopefully you'll make it to the top there as well.